So let's get right into drawing front view, top view, and right side views of this isometric object. And spoiler, it's gonna be the right side view that's actually gonna be the hard part of this drawing. There's no one better to help than your TA Indiana. Cylinders are his second favorite thing. Just look right behind me at his hamster wheel, right? It's a gigantic cylinder and it's his absolute favorite toy. So this isometric drawing is only six squares wide by four squares deep into the page and four squares tall. Since the squares on my graph paper are actually much smaller than this, if I didn't scale the drawing, my drawing would be really tiny. It would be really hard to see and kind of a waste of space. So all of the measurements that I take on the isometric view, I'm gonna multiply all of those to two. So I'm using a scale of two to one. All right, well, your TA Indiana just abandoned us, so let's start the drawing, and if we have questions later, I'll, I'll go find him. Well, cylinders and holes look like a circle from one direction, and just like regular rectangles from the other two directions. By drawing this circle first, you can identify the quadrants, the top, bottom, left, and right points on the circle, and use those to define the, the width or the height of the rectangle on the other views. So in drawing my top view, I'm starting at the very top and working my way down is to draw visible surfaces, so the two circles are right at the very top, so I draw them first. I label some dimensions here on the isometric drawing as I'm locating exactly where the center is located and what the radius is. And drawing circles using software is super easy. If you were drawing these by hand, the best option is to use a circular tool. It's like a piece of plastic with a circular cutout that you just literally trace a circle. Next best option would be a compass. If you can use one of those, last time most of us used those might have been elementary school. Maybe an art class in high school. But if you're stuck trying to freehand a drawing, just put a little tiny dot at the north, south, east, and west quadrants and try your best to draw a quarter of a circle at a time. Draw four arcs to essentially connect the north, south, east, west dots. Because those are the most important points. As long as those quadrants are in the correct location, it's not the worst thing in the world if your circle is actually kind of wobbly. As long as those extreme up, down, left, and right points are in the right place. Next visible surface as I move down on the top view is gonna be like the top part of this wedge. And from the top, it's just gonna look like a rectangle that just takes the entire bounding box. It's just the entire length and width of the shape. And that's everything visible from the top. This is a pretty simple shape. There's not gonna be anything hidden beneath anything else. So no hidden lines. So last thing to finish up this drawing will just be the center lines. Center lines are a long, short, long, right? Like a dash dot style line. I'll start off by drawing a plus right in the center of each circle that is like the short, right? Long, short, long. And then from there, in each of the four cardinal directions, left, right, up, and down, I draw the long that goes through the circle, right? These long lines shouldn't end at the circle. They need to cross past the circle. Doesn't matter exactly how far past the circle, just whatever looks good. And one thing you are allowed to do that's optional is to actually connect the two center lines. So in this case, the right side of the small circle and the left side of the large circle, I can actually connect those center lines to each other instead of leaving kind of a gap in between them. And doing this helps make it very clear to the reader that they are exactly horizontal from each other, that their centers do perfectly line up. Also, if I were dimensioning this drawing, I would only need to add one dimension since they're both now connected to each other. The same dimension would work for both. Front view next, because I'm saving the right hand view for last in case we need to go get your TA Indy for help. So working from front to back, the very front of the front view, we have the flat triangular surface, so I draw that in first. And remembering that I have to multiply all the dimensions by two, so even though the triangle in the isometric view is a height of two, I have to draw that as a height of four on my drawing. And cylinders, when viewed from the side, just look like rectangles. You can't actually see the roundness at all. It just looks like a rectangle. So the, the left and right sides go all the way to the edge of the part, and for finding the parts kind of in the middle, I'm just tracing straight down from the top view. This is why it was really important to make sure that the left and right quadrants are in the right location because I'm going to use those locations on the top view to measure straight down to line up with the front view. So nothing hidden on this view, right? There's only three things. It's two cylinders and a triangular wedge. So there's nothing behind anything else. No hidden lines. So I wrap this up by drawing a center line. On the circular view, a center line looks like a plus, like a cross, in order to identify both left, right, and up, down, where the center of the circle is. On the rectangular view of a cylinder, when looking at it from the side, you only need one center line, only in this case, the vertical line that runs the full length of the cylinder. But it's still the same long, short, long sort of design. So I start off by drawing a little short line in the middle and then kind of up and down lines after that. And they still need to 
extend past the visible line. They don't stop right at the edge of the cylinder, they extend past it. Some kind of arbitrary distance, use whatever looks best. On the right hand view, drawing from right to left, the first surface you'll see is gonna be the rounded shape of the wider cylinder. So I can see from the front view that it goes all the way to the top of the drawing. So the top and bottom quadrants on the top view will reflect across the miter line to be the left and right edges on the right side view. And that the left part of the right view corresponds to the bottom part of the top view. And I have to say that really slowly, otherwise I'll definitely mess it up. And let's see if I can say it faster this time. The right side of the right view will correspond to the top side of the top view. And yes, that was a little bit easier to say. But the bottom part of this cylinder is actually the tricky part to draw because it's not gonna look rectangular down at the bottom because it's actually at a slope. So since it is at a slope, these left and right quadrants on the right view correspond actually to like the center line of the cylinder, which is raised up a little bit of height on the front view. So we line up this point on the front view and draw an arrow across to the right hand view, which shows us sort of where that curve should actually go, how high up the triangle that curved surface actually goes. Next visible surface will be the flat part of the triangular wedge itself. When looked from the right hand side, it is just gonna look like a rectangle, even though it's at a slope, right? You can't see depth in a two dimensional drawing. So we just draw a rectangle up to the same height that we see on the front view. So on the isometric drawing, look at these blue dashed lines. It's sort of like the, the bottom of the cylinder has sort of a circular shape, but it's kind of at an angle because of the triangular wedge so that back part of the circle will be show up as hidden lines, as hidden dashed lines on the right hand view. And thank goodness, just in time, your TA Andy is back to help us out because this is where the drawing starts to get tough. So I can see on the front view that the fat cylinder is a height here and I can trace this line over to the right hand view. And that shows me the top of this dashed line that I'm gonna draw. So I'm basically completing a sort of football kind of shape where the bottom arc is visible because it's right on the front, but then the top arc is gonna be hidden because it's behind the front. Yeah. And I am astonishingly amazed at how cleanly I was able to draw this dashed line. Usually dashed lines and weird arcs like this are gonna come out kinda wonky, so if yours don't look nearly this clean, that's totally fine. Just make sure that the top part is at the correct location. That's the most important thing, that the top is at the right place. So I'm gonna save the small cylinder for last, and first I'm just gonna finish that horizontal line that refers to the triangular wedge, right? I drew two small visible lines on either side and kind of stopped in the middle. Let's just go ahead and just finish that up right now. Horizontal hidden line all the way across that represents the back top edge of the triangular wedge that's blocked by the cylinders on the right-hand view. So drawing the small cylinder next, the whole thing is gonna be hidden lines, which is gonna make it a huge pain to draw, but we can line up the top and bottom on the top view across the miter line to give us our left and right vertical boundaries on the right side view. And on the front view, I wanna know exactly where this lowest front corner is gonna be, where the side center points are gonna be, and then where the top back middle part is gonna be. So I draw three horizontal lines from the front view over to the right view, and this is gonna help me line everything up. So I'm drawing vertical lines down, sort of across the miter line, that's gonna be the main height of the drawing. Those vertical lines end at the middle of these horizontal orange arrows, which corresponds to the middle of the cylinder. And then the top and bottom parts of the cylinder, right, the two top and bottom orange lines, those are where when I draw my little dashed line, sort of football sort of shape, right, those will have their peak and their minimum right at these top and bottom orange lines. It's gonna look here on the camera like I nailed it my first try, but that's just because I actually edited out like five bad drawings that I did first before I actually got it to look decent enough. Even drawing straight dash lines is sometimes difficult. Trying to draw a weird arc football sort of shape in a dashed hidden line style, just make sure that the top and bottom are at the right point. Uh, other than that, try to just get it as, as good as you can in this case. It's okay if you have to erase a little bit and redraw a couple of times. Just try to make sure you have an actual, like a dash and not a gap right at the top and bottom to make it really clear exactly where the top and bottom of your arcs is. So to wrap up, last line is gonna be a center line, right? These cylinders, fortunately, they're gonna have the same center line right through the center. So I just draw myself a little short 
dashed line right through the middle, then extend vertically up and down from there with the longer lines that go through the top and bottom of the cylinders. If you want some more practice drawing cylinders and holes, but you're ready to step up to a higher level of difficulty, then click on the next video that's on the screen here. It's probably one of the hardest drawings that I would give to students early on in an engineering graphics course, so it's a great practice problem to kind of test your abilities, see where you're at.